one of the most useful older horses in the country, but he does seem to have a little will of his own. He showed his ability on his first race of the season. That was at Doncaster when beating Bono by two lengths over a mile. Since then, he's run four times over varying distances. His last start was at Longchamp in the Group 1, Prix de Ispahan, over a mile in the furlong, where he finished fourth, just under four lengths off of the winner, the Wonder. He's run once over a mile and a half this season. That was in the uh, John Porter Stakes at Newbury, when just failing by a head to beat another of today's runners, Pellerin. They had a terrific fight that day. His latest betting in the market is, in fact, 50 to 1. Well, Barry Hills has got him looking a picture. Number one, Cracker Bell. The atmosphere really building up here at Ascot now. A vast crowd around the paddock and everybody eagerly awaiting to have their first glimpse of Shergar. Shergar, the best three-year-old I think we've seen in, in Europe for a very, very long time. This, in fact, is number two, Fingal's Cave. He's only run once this season. That was in the mile and a quarter eclipse stakes at Sandown when he ran right up to his best form, finishing a close third to Master Willie after the, disqual the disqualification of hard fought that was. Last season, Fingal's Cave turned in one of his best performances over this course and distance when beating Prince Roland in the Churchill Stakes and also when beating Dukedom for the Cumberland Lodge Stakes here on the same course. He showed a good turn of foot in both of those races and no doubt he's a useful horse over this distance. He's 33 to 1 at the moment in the betting. Number two, Fingal's Cave. This is uh, number three behind the tree there, like cavalry. Last year, Light Cavalry rounded off a good season by winning the St. Ledger Stakes at Doncaster, where he made all and ran on with great zest to beat Watermill by four lengths. He made his four-year-old debut in the John Porter Stakes at Newbury, where he injured himself during the race. He knocked himself very hardly, in fact, and was virtually pulled up to finish seventh of the night run at nine runners behind Pellerin. He's run twice since then, here at Ascot, that was in the Hardwick Stakes, at the Royal Meeting where he failed by three parts or three lengths I should say to hold the challenge of Pellerin and then regaining winning form at Newmarket that was at the July meeting when rallying close home to beat Castle Keep and Centurious in a battle of necks and he really fought on that occasion and Leicester had to pull out all of the stops and as you see there he's quite heavily bandaged on both of his forelegs and uh, it's reported that Henry Cecil his trainer has had quite a lot of trouble of keeping this horse right and getting him fit for this great race today. Number three, Light Cavalry. And there we have Master Willie. Last year, Master Willie ran eight times and only finished once out of the first four. His two wins came over a mile and a mile and a quarter and was also runner-up in the Epsom Derby behind Hendon. This year, he's a much stronger horse and I think he's uh, improved a hell of a lot. And as you see very much on his toes, he's undefeated in his three starts. That was the Jockey Club Stakes at Newmarket in May, running out a 15-length winner from King's Ride, that was. The Coronation Cup at Epsom in June, this time getting the better of Prince B by two lengths. Both races, both of those races were over a mile and a half. He was brought back to the mile and a quarter for the Eclipse Stakes at Sandown at the beginning of the month, where he made all the running to beat the subsequently disqualified hard fought by three parts per length. He had Fingal's Cave fourth and Madame Gay fifth behind him. He's a lot better horse held up and he's had to in his races this year, make most of his own running in nearly all of his races, and if uh, Philip Waldron can give him plenty of chance today, I can see him making perhaps the best fight of it of all the other runs. Number four, Master Will. This is Pellerin, number five. After finishing fourth in last year's derby, Pellerin's form deteriorated somewhat. However, this year as a four-year-old, he's done nothing wrong, and he's undefeated in three starts. His first race of the season was the John Porter Stakes at Newbury, where he got the better of Crackerbell by a head. He then went on to win the Ormond Stakes at Chester in May. He got up on the line to beat Bill Broker in the closing stages, but in fact he was travelling so fast at the finish that he had a length and a half of daylight between him and the runner-up at the finish. He then came for the Hardwick Stakes here at the Royal Meeting, where he showed a good turn of foot to deprive Light Cavalry of the spoils by three lengths. And perhaps that... Uh, the best run he's ever put up. It was a good performance that day, and he's seven to one in the betting at the moment. That's number five, Pellerin. Here he is, Shergar himself, with young Walter just flexing his muscles there. Shergar has run six times in his career and has only met defeat once. That was at the hands of Beldell Flutter in the William Hill Futurity Stakes, 
at Doncaster as a two-year-old. His three-year-old campaign has gone without a hitch, having his first race of the season. That was in the classic trial at Sandown, where he ran out an unextended winner over Kirtland. He then took the Chester bars with no less than 12 lengths from Sunley Builds. His next start, his next start was in the Epsom Derby, where he never looked in any danger at any stage of the race, running out a 10 lengths winner from Glint to Gold. He completed a unique double on his last start when beating Cut Above by four lengths for the Irish Derby at the Curragh. And that day he had Lester Pickett in the saddle because young Walter, who we're looking at there, had suffered the wrath of the stewards and had to stand down and watch it from the stands. But young Walter had the pleasure of riding in, in the Epsom Derby. Well, there he is, the horse that has a $10 million, um, I should say a £10 million tag on him when he retires and goes to stud. And he looks worth every penny of it at the moment. Well, this is number eight, the only lady in the race, a bay filly, Madam Gay, was still a maiden at the start of the season, but uh, had placed in top company in the early races of the year, notably when second to Blue Wind in the Epsom Oaks and third behind Petrolese in the Prince Elizabeth Stakes at Epsom, was then second in the Musadora Stakes at York behind Condessa. She also finished fifth behind Fairy Footsteps in the 1,000 Guineas at Newmarket, so it just shows you the quality of this filly. And then she lost her maiden tag in fairy tale fashion when winning the Prix Diane at Chantilly in June, the French equivalent, that is, to our Oaks. She's run once since then in the Eclipse Stakes at Sandown, went fifth behind Master Willie. She's a lovely filly, this. And uh, as perhaps Shergar is worth 10 million pounds when he retires to stud, this filly must be worth a million pounds when she goes to stud. There she is, Paul Kellaway has really got her looking a picture in her coat and the sun really making a shine like a new pen. Shergar just in front of her. There he is. Young Walter Swinburne rode the second winner here, so he'll have his confidence boosted. Followed out by the only filly in the race, Madam Gay, and the vast crowd beginning to now wander back to the stands to watch this race that the people have been, uh, the racing public, that is, have been looking forward to for many a month. Well, there we have Number one, leading the parade, this is Krakowell. He's a chestnut horse by Mount Hagen, out of Pretty Maid by Acropolis. So he's bred to get a mile and a half, although I think that perhaps a mile and a quarter is his best trip. He's ridden by Steve Cawthon. And if Steve Cawthon should win this race today on Krakowell, that'll be his 50th winner of the season. He's 66 to one at the moment in the betting. And uh, I wouldn't mind throwing a little bit of way each way on him at 66 to one. We drop back now to number two, Fingal's Cave. He's trained by John Dunlop at Arundel and ridden by Pat Eddery. He's a nice bay colt by Ragstone out of Blue Echoes, who was by Mountain Call, and he's running in the colors of Mr. Jim Mullion. Fingal's Cave, a really useful performer in top-class company, likes to come from behind in his races, so I think we'll see Pat Eddery holding him up today for a late run. Here we have Light Cavalry running in the colours of Mr. Jim Joel, a bay colt by Brigadier Gerard, who won this race a few years back, out of Glass Slipper, who was by Ralco, another horse that's really bred for stamina, and I think we'll see Lester Pickett, who's bid in for his seventh winner of this race, and Light Cavalry, in fact, is 14 to 1 at the moment from 12 to 1. I think we'll see Lester cutting out the early work, and I think we'll see him making it a really super pace early on because that's the only chance really like Cavalry has got and that's to try and wear down Shergar and the other five runners stand up. Here we have Master Willie and as Julian says this is the one he likes to chase Shergar home. He's seven to one from 13 to two at the moment. Master Willie a chestnut colt by High Line out of Fair Winter who was by Set Fair. That's rather unusual because Set Fair was a very good sprinter of a many seasons ago when trained by Walter Nightingale at Epsom and uh, I just wonder where this horse gets his stamina from I suppose it's from his Sire High Line he's uh, trained by Henry Candy running in the colours of Mr Robert Barnett and ridden by Philip Walton this is Pellerin trained at Newmarket by Harry Rag, running in the colours of Sir Philip Oppenheimer he's seven to one at the moment he's a bay or brown colt by Sir Gaylord out of Padrona by St. Paddy. So another one that's bred to get the mile and a half really well. Brian Taylor is undefeated on this colt so far this season from his three starts and has really 
struck up a really happy partnership and knows how to ride him backwards. He dropped back to number seven, Shergar. Well, what do we say about this uh, three-year-old colt? Except for the first time in his career, he's meeting his older rivals. He's 11 to four on favorite, and they go seven to one bar here. A beautifully bred colt, Shergar, by great nephew, out of Shermin, by Val de Loire and running in the colors of His Highness the Aga Khan. And uh, I think today will give Walter Swinburne a really another great moment, such as he did when he won the Epsom Derby. We drop back now to the filly, Madame Gay. As I say, she's 40 to one at the moment. She uh, was a maiden right up until she journeyed to France for the Prix d'Ain. And uh, then she lost her maiden in really fairy book fashion when she was ridden by Lester Pigot. Shergar is going to be the last to go down. He turns and just look at this very highly bred colt in his action, really striding out. And you see there he's got quite a quick action on the way to the post. This elongates the faster he goes. And as he warms up in his race, he really starts to cover the ground. And. Uh, he really is a racing machine. A temperament as well that goes with all good horses. Nothing really worries him. He walked around the paddock as if he'd been doing it. Never mind for three, two seasons, I should say, because uh, he only ran twice as a two-year-old. He won at uh, Newbury when he was ridden by Lester Pigott. And then he was second in the William Hill Futurity behind Beldale Flutter. The horses pull up nicely around at the top end of the course here at the mile and a half start all seven runners racing on ground as perfect as you'll get it for flat racing and uh, going through the record book this is the 31st running of this the court king george the sixth and queen elizabeth the second stakes and in the 30 years it's been won by three-year-olds no less than 15 times and by four-year-olds 14 times and once by a five-year-old so the three-year-olds have a pretty good record. Master Willie. Well, there we see Walter Swinburne with all the responsibilities of the world on his shoulders at the moment. I wonder how he sees this race being run. Um, I should think like Cavalry will be making the running. Um, I might probably sit up behind him and take it from there. Um, I'll sure to be getting a, a lead into the straight they'll be going a good enough pace and hopefully if he's going good enough I'll be able to take it up as soon as we straighten up and hopefully go on and win. Uh, Shergar is in very good condition, it's never been better. Um, looking forward to riding him, I uh, can't see any problem. Confident words from, words from a 19 year old rider but then it shines. He you can see it in his riding. He's never in the wrong place. Shergar, five to two on favorite from 11 to four on, and still seven to one bar him. But uh, just look at Shergar standing there and just look at the wonderful job Michael Stout has done to bring this colt to perfection for today's race. He's running the Epsom Derby, the Irish Derby, and just look at the condition still on Shergar. His coat really shining out there, and uh, it's no mean feat to produce a colt for these races because a lot of work goes through them on their way to a race like this. I don't think young Walter will have any worries early on because uh, he's a type of horse that can be ridden right up on the pace or he can drop him back because he's got terrific acceleration with an abundance of stamina as they race into the last two furlongs soon after they straighten up. Pingles Cave just walks to the left of the picture with Pat Edry in the saddle like Cavalry 12 to 1 from 14 to 1. Pat Edry bid him for his second King George. He won it in 1975 on Grundy. Well, Brian Taylor goes in on Pellerin. Brian bid him for his first win of this great race. I've had quite a lot to say of all the runners, all seven of them. Let's join Peter O'Sullivan. That's Fingal's cave in. And now Shergar himself. Walter Swinburne in his first ride in the King George the Sixth and Queen Elizabeth's Diamond Stakes. Master Willie goes in. There's Cracker Val and Light Cavalry to go. 
Lester Piggott here on his 25th ride in the big race. Goes into his stall. Shergar 5 to 2 on. Master Willie 7 to 1. Pellerin 15 to 2. Cracker Val is in. And that's it. They're all installed. Under starter's orders. And they're away. Shergar, Master Willie, and Light Cavalry the first to show. And Light Cavalry going on now from Master Willie and Shergar. Then comes Madame Gay, Pellerin on the inside, Fingal's Cave, and finally Crackerbell. Light Cavalry making it from Master Willie and Shergar disputing second. Just behind them come Madame Gay, then Pellerin. Behind Pellerin is Fingal's Cave, and finally Light Cavalry as they race downhill still towards Swindley Bottom. Light Cavalry not taking him along at a very fast gallop at the moment. From Master Willie on the outside of Shergar, then Pellerin and Madame Gay matching strides are behind them, Fingal's Cave and finally Crackerbell. Racing towards the mile pole now in the King George the Sixth and Queen Elizabeth Diamond Stakes and it's Light Cavalry, Lester Bigot in the lead from Master Willie and Shergar, then Madame Gay and Pellerin, then Fingal's Cave and finally Crackerbell. Racing towards the seven furlong pole and the pace has quickened and Light Cavalry still in the lead from Master Willie second, Shergar the three-year-old on the inside, just behind them, Madame Gay, the only filly. Then comes Pellerin. Behind Pellerin is Fingal's Cave. And then comes Crackerbell. They've passed the seven marker, racing towards the six now. And still light cavalry from Master Willie. Then Shergar. Madame Gay getting closer. Then Pellerin. Behind Pellerin, Fingal's Cave. And finally Crackerbell. They pass the six furlong pole now, racing towards the five. And it's light cavalry from Master Willie. Shergar. Madame Gay going up on the outside of Shergar. Pellerin comes next. Fingal's Cave and Crackerbell getting closer. Racing towards the half mile mark, and as they do so, Master Willie goes up on the outside of Light Cavalry. Shergar on the inside, then Madame Gay. Behind Madame Gay is Fingal's Cave. Pellerin is losing ground, then comes Crackerbell. They're racing towards the home turn, and it's Master Willie and Light Cavalry. Master Willie going on now from Light Cavalry. Madame Gay's moved round on the outside of Shergar. Shergar in fourth place now as they race towards the home turn. Crackerbell's improved into fifth, and Master Willie going for home now. It's Master Willie with the advantage over Light Cavalry. Walter Swinburne slips through on the rails on Shergar, but it's Master Willie with the advantage. Madame Gay coming there strongly on the stand side. Shergar making ground over on the far side now. Racing down towards the furlong pole, and Shergar, the three-year-old, burst through to take it up on the far side. It's Shergar now from Madame Gay. Master Willie, Fingal's Cave, putting it a good run. But as they race into the closing stages, Shergar lengthening in his stride. He's going to win it in tremendous style. Shergar striding up to the line from Madame Gay and Fingal's Cave. And at the line, Shergar wins it. Madame Gay and Fingal's Cave in a photo for second and third. Then came Master Willie and Crackerbell and Pellerin and Light Cavalry. A photo for second, but no doubt about the winner of the 1981. King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Diamond Stakes. First. Number seven, Shergar, owned by His Highness the Aga Khan, trained by Michael Stout, and written by Walter Swinburne. And it's a photo for second place, a photo between number